Christmas is such an exciting time of year. It's an exciting night. Can anyone, I can almost taste it. When I was a child, there was something magical about Christmas. And it was tantalising. You know, I'd wake up on Christmas morning and I could almost touch the magic in the air. And I loved that feeling of that magical thing of Christmas. And then something happens when we grow up. And I'll put it to you that the magic shouldn't die. It shouldn't die at all. I'm going to read you a story. It's out of the Bible. And it's about the, what are they called? The the Magi. And they're a really mysterious, magical kind of group of people. We don't know a lot about them. Let's read it. Everything we know about the Magi, we know from this passage that I'm about to read you. It's in Matthew 2. And uh, I've got it up on the screen, so you don't have to go far to find it. Here we go. Magi, Matthew 2. So after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and we've come to worship him. But when King Herod heard about this, he was disturbed, and all of Jerusalem with him. When he called together all the people's, all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. And then Herod sent the Magi secret. So then Herod called the Magi secretly, and found out from them the exact time that the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, "Go and search carefully for the child." And as soon as you find him, report him to me so that I may go and worship with him. And after they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star that they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. And on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. And they bowed down. And they worshipped him. They opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Why is that passage a bit of a mystery? I'll tell you why. And some of you are going to be very upset with me. Uh, Our Christmas nativity scenes aren't always as biblical as we might think because there's a lot that that passage doesn't say that we throw into our Christmas nativity scenes, all right? We have no idea where they come from. We have no idea where they went when they left. All we know that Jerusalem was, not Jerusalem, Bethlehem was their destination. The child to be born the king of the Jews was their reason. That's all we know. Who were they? Were they kings? doesn't say that, says they're magi. Well, then what the heck is magi? Well, who knows? That's a really interesting word. Apparently, the word magi can mean dream interpreters. Magi can be magicians. Magi were known to be spiritualists. Magi were not kings as far as we know. Were they Jews that didn't return from Babylon when that was hundreds of years earlier when Babylon? We don't know. Some people wonder that. How many Magi were there? One, three. We don't know. It actually doesn't say. Were they men? We don't know. We don't know. That could have been anything. Could have been a a whole troop of families. We have no idea who these Magi were, how many they were, all of those things. But we do know some things that this scripture tells us. We know 
They didn't go to a manger to see Jesus. They went to a house. Well, that's different to the nativity scenes that we set up, isn't it? And we know that he didn't, they didn't come and bow down and give gifts to a baby. They came and bowed down and gave gifts to a child, a toddler or an infant. It's a very different word in the original language about what describes Jesus had grown a bit. And it's fair to assume that the Magi had came sometime after Jesus' birth. Because Herod, if you read the end of the story, he didn't really want to go and worship Jesus. He wanted to kill any threat to his throne as the king of the Jews. And so he went and killed every child in Bethlehem under the age of two. So there's some things here that the Bible throws up at us that really challenge our thinking about what was happening at the nativity scene. Because I'll put it to you, that Christmas culture speaks very, very loudly into our understanding and expectation of what we're to get out of Christmas. So much so that three wise kings went to Jesus and knelt down at the manger with the shepherds and the angels is in our head, yet it is not in our Bible. Christmas culture will speak and lead us in many different directions. There's a lot of unresolvable mystery about these magi, who, what, where, why, how, all of those kind of things. But we know for sure about their intent. Their intent was to find this child who was born king of the Jews. The Magi came to honour this child. The Magi came seeking this child. The Magi came to worship this child and present their gifts to them. The question I want to ask us this morning, we're not in the morning. It's Christmas Eve. Old habits die hard. Now, the question I want to ask you, this Christmas Eve, who... Do you honour? What is your intention? What is your purpose this Christmas? Now, some of us tomorrow will travel great distances to visit family, to visit friends. In the midst of your journey of travelling great distances, who are you honouring in that moment? Now, tomorrow we're going to exchange gifts, yeah? Who are you honouring in this exchange of gifts. You know, tomorrow we're going to feast on food, fine food in my house, wine, and we're going to laze on chairs as the kids run amok. We're going to eat the best food that we might eat all year. All of us tomorrow are going to live just a little bit higher than our normal standard of living, aren't we? We're going to eat and drink well. Who are we honouring amongst the great opulent party that we're going to have tomorrow? Somehow the Magi knew that this child was worthy of their honour. And so they sought after him with this unwavering conviction to meet them. So much so that when seemingly when the star disappeared and they got to Jerusalem and they had to ask for directions, it did not stop them when they did not know where to go. They pressed through to find this child, to find the one that they were seeking after, to worship him. They knew that this child was to be honoured. And so that's what their intention was. You know, I often find it quite ironic, 2,000 and a bit years later, when it comes Christmas time and we can get so busy and so wound up that the whole reason for Christmas can get lost, it can get put aside, it can get put away. Unintentionally, it can become an extra thing. And I am exhibit A on that because I can tell you that I am hallelujah, praising Jesus that tomorrow is Christmas Day and the mad rush of the week leading into it is over. Often for many of us, Christmas Day is, oh, thank goodness it's arrived. We can breathe again because we're just so busy. We forget what Christmas is about. You know, Western Christian culture wants to pull you away from Jesus, wants to fill you up with so many things that make you busy that the best thing about Christmas Day is that it's finally here. 
and you can breathe. You know, I reckon, what do you reckon, Christmas culture, what, 95% honouring of capitalism, maybe 5% Jesus, if you're lucky, if you dig deep enough, like the, sto- like the poem said, the other story, wade through the tinsel. You can, find, you can find a bit there. And unless we are intentional about seeking Jesus at Christmas time, Christmas culture will drag us and will pull us into what it tells us is important. And you don't even know you're doing it because if you knew that you were doing it, you wouldn't do it. But we can so easily find ourselves, yeah. It's not that Christmas culture is this big evil thing that we need to fight against. But for many years, I believed in the three wise men and um, at the baby manger and didn't realise how much Christmas culture had shaped my mind about what happened on that first day. We've got to intentionally seek Jesus at this time, intentionally lower down the hubble bubble of everything that goes on. What do your actions say about who or what you're honouring most this Christmas? It's just a question. So I think sometimes we can say a lot of things about our actions will speak so much louder. Let your actions speak to you. Let your actions challenge you about who and what you're honouring this Christmas, yeah? We can be as close to God as we choose to be. It's our kind of choice. Having a, having a relationship with God is, uh, it's like having a relationship with, the per, with a person. If you don't intentionally put into it, well, then it won't intentionally go anywhere. To build relationship, you need to, to put into those things. It's the same thing about seeking after God. We don't simply, unthinkingly, accidentally coast into a desire to seek the things of God, yeah? And sometimes, unless we're intentional, not sometimes, or unless we're intentional about doing that, we're not going to accidentally fall into it. Now, the Bible tells us, encourages us to set our mind and heart to seek the Lord. You know, Paul wrote this thing in the Psalms. He said, uh, David, it was not Paul, wrong dude. You know, I'm speaking to a morning service out of the wrong end of the Bible. But anyway, David goes, the thing I seek most of all is the privilege of meditating in your temple, God, living in your presence every day of my life, delighting in his incomparable perfections and joy. You know, he didn't even have a Jesus to meet with, to seek And he has this tangible desire to be with God, to spend time with him. Who are you honouring on this day? You know, the more you seek Jesus, the more you begin to discover the difference between a Christmas culture and a Christian culture. Because the more I discover Jesus, the more I realise they're actually very, very different. The more I seek and follow Jesus, the more I realise that Western, Western culture isn't Christian culture. Seems obvious on the outset, but unless we're intentional about it, we we live it, we do it. So the three, three, see how natural that is? The Magi, however many of them there were, they find Jesus, they intentionally seek him out and then they worship him. They bring him gifts and they worship him. And it's a true, pure kind of worship because they're not going to get anything back from this little child. They're not going to get anything even back from the family. They're a family of very ordinary financial means. They just worshipped him because of who he was, because of who he is, not because of anything that they can get back from him. You know, a lot of, I've seen many Christians, and you'll have friends that have done this as well, who have gone through certain times in their lives and they, they and it's not going as things planned and all of a sudden they're like, but I've done this for you, God, and I've worshipped you and I've served you and I've believed in you. And it, under all of that, there's this underbelly of belief that because that they've done this and behaved in that way, that God would then give them something back. The Magi come to worship Jesus. There's nothing to get back. There's nothing. It's purely a, a pure worship of because of who you are. They worshipped him. You know, if any of us here have 
even if we maybe kind of think Jesus was the Son of God, even if we believe it with all of our heart, or even if we just, okay, maybe, and that's something, all of those things, if He is the Son of God, then He is worthy of our honour, He is worthy of our worship, and He is worthy of us seeking with everything we have, yeah? They worshipped Him. Who are you honouring? What are we really worshipping this Christmas? It's just... I don't mean it sounds heavy and everyone's very deathly silent, but I don't mean it to be like that. Don't be lured into a false sense of security. Oh, because we're in church. You know what? Um, Because it's not physically where we are. Tomorrow morning, some people will come to church as well, and I'll be one of those, and that's brilliant. It's about our heart posture. God really knows where the posture of our heart is. You know, one thing in this story that really pricked my interest is that through this whole thing, where are the chief priests and the teachers of the Old Testament that told them where to find Jesus while this was going on, the Messiah? Where are they? They're in a church. They're at the temple. They're in Jerusalem, six miles away, only six miles away. And these guys, they knew, you know, it talked in the Bible, just and we just read it, when Herod and all of Jerusalem was disturbed at the news that maybe the Messiah had been born. Like there were rumours going round. And if there was rumours that the Messiah was, has been born, who do you reckon the first people to hear those rumours would be? The priests. The ones who would, that that is most important to. That is where the news would go to first. It's like when two people get engaged, the news first goes to maybe their parents, but the most important people in relation to that relationship. It's the same thing in this thing. Where are these chief priests? They're in a church. They're in the temple. They're doing what was culturally expected of them. They're going about life as though they'd always done it. They're carrying out the religious um, rites, behaviours, that they were meant to be doing. They were doing anything, but they weren't in Bethlehem. And ironically, they were in a temple where they believed God's presence was. In the wrong space. It's not about where we are even. You don't have to be here tomorrow. You don't have to be here tonight to be honouring Jesus. It's about the posture of our heart. Now, Christmas is a a wonderful, magical, um, it can be such a great experience. And I know, on the other hand, I don't have to, that it can be an awful experience as well. I get that. But my challenge is to us that are here tomorrow, tonight, today ask yourself, who am I really honouring here? And if it's Jesus that you really want to be honouring, I'm not saying change your behaviours. That's not for me to tell you. That's for you. That's another thing. I'm just saying then put something into action to intentionally do that. Tomorrow, really simple. um, Tomorrow I'm really fortunate. I'm very fortunate that we're flying down to Melbourne to spend a few days with my family. It's a two-hour flight. But in putting this together, I realise that tomorrow, potentially, I have two hours where I can give my kids screens and I can focus in and honour Jesus in that moment. And, yeah, there are other behaviours around Christmas that are very Christmas cultural. But I implore you to some stage tonight, tomorrow, next week, honour him. Yeah? 